Hello, this is Anna from Madame Sewing. Today I want to show you some Pinterest sewing tips that I've put to the test. And I've had some successes, some definite failures, and some in between. Some that I think, you know, it depends on the person and, you know, more practice. Um, so let me show you. Tip number one, wrap your needle to thread it. This one was a mixed results one. You know, it, I think it depends on the kind of needle. It definitely does not work with thick thread. It totally shreds it, no matter how, how much you rub it and rub it and rub it, and it just, it shreds it. Um, so that didn't work. Now with regular sewing thread, it seems to depend on the needle. Like uh, with a fairly strong needle that doesn't bend and has a, a fairly wide eye, it works. But you know, so does, you know, holding your thread into or just threading it. It really uh, doesn't seem to me to be much faster. I guess in a moment of frustration, you know, when you can't thread that needle, it might work. But you know, there were plenty of times where I just could not get it to work, as you can see. Um, so, mixed results. Number two, my favorite, put rubber bands to keep your pedal from sliding. Failure, it doesn't work. I've tried it many times. This one is actually one that I've tried before, and I've tried white rubber bands, skinny rubber bands, one, three, 24 rubber bands, it doesn't work, you know? If you put a lot of pressure like they show on the videos, of course, but then the rubber bands are unnecessary. But when you're like moving your foot to like wrap that pedal and start gently sewing, it just doesn't work, it, it still slides. If you find two rubber bands that are fairly thick and that they fit the pedal nicely, they're not too loose, they're not so tight that they're closing the pedal. Not easy, you know, that works a little better. It does give you a little more traction, but all in all, I don't think it's worth it. Tip number three, use sponges to quilt. You know, when I quilt, I, you know, I really use pressure with my fingers, you know, with my thumbs. So I, I'm keeping a little tension, opening the fabric, so to speak, to move it around. When I use the sponges, I kind of lose that traction. Like my thumbs are too high. Now, my sponges are a little thick maybe. So maybe that was part of the problem. I think this one is worth exploring a little more. Tip number four, rubber banded pencils to add seam allowances to your pattern. Well, you know, with two pencils together, you can rubber band them together and they do stay together pretty nicely as long as you have the flat sides. Uh, but you only get a quarter inch seam allowance, which is okay for knits. Also, I found it very awkward to hold together and to manage for both pencils to hit the paper at the same time, especially around curves. If I could use a ruler, that was very easy. But if I have to use, you know, if I'm freehanding around a curve, I didn't find it so easy. However, that could be because I'm left-handed. Now, the other option I found is you can rubber band three pencils together and you get exactly five-eighths of an inch. Um, and honestly, it wasn't that much more awkward. I put the central pencil up so it wouldn't make a line on the paper and it was just as difficult as it was using two pencils. So, you know, mixed results. I think with practice, it would probably be better. Use a fork to make pleats. This one was a total surprise. It works. It works really well, actually. Um, you know, you have to be a little careful as you are placing the edge of the fold under your foot but it really does make beautiful pleats in no time. I hate pinning pleats. I mean, you could use it just for pinning and then run it under your machine as usual. And that, even using it just for that to do the folding would speed up the process. But that really is easy. Oh, I love this one. Clean your sewing machine with a pipe cleaner. You know, you make a little brush, just bend the, so the pipe cleaner and insert it into a straw. And I used the metal straw that I had around that I never used, but it works great. It really gets into the, all the nooks and crannies. I could get it into spots where, you know, normally I don't have access with just the little brushes that come with the machine. And I didn't even have to take anything apart. I didn't have to like unscrew the plate or anything. So it really works and it grabs all the lint in there. So this one was a success. Use a mug to hold a thread cone. This one works really well. Um, when you're sewing with a thread cone, if you don't have a holder, 
you can put it in a mug. The mug obviously has to be big enough to hold the cones, but it really keeps it stable. Now, it might depend on your machine's configuration, on the path that the thread has to follow. The thread is coming from underneath the machine when you're putting in the thread cone in a mug without anything else. So it might get caught on pieces on the top of your machine. So this one might depend on your machine, but it does keep it steady, especially when you're sewing fast. I found that when I was trying to wind a bobbin, there is no way I could do it without you know, st stabilizing that cone in any way. Otherwise it would just like flop around all over the table. Make even blanket stitch. This one I'm sure you've seen in a lot of places. You know, you draw two lines on one of your fingers or on your thumb and you use it as a guide to evenly space your stitches. It works great. Uh, it just takes a little finicking to figure out where you want to draw your lines, what finger, how you're going to hold the fabric. But once you figure that out, it really spaces them evenly. Use a straw and a skewer to turn a loop. This one works really, really well. I think it might be the one that works the best of all, of all the ones I tried. So with this tip, you need to close one of the ends of your loop and then you slide the straw inside and you use the blunt end of the skewer to push the loop through the um, through the straw. It works really well. It, it was super easy. There was there were no snags. The last one is use just a long thread to turn your loop. And this one also worked really well. And it, I like it because, you know, with the straw one, your strap needs to be wide enough to fit the straw and it might not be. I found that the same size loop on the bias worked, but on the straight grain it didn't because it didn't stretch, so I couldn't fit the straw. So this one you can do with any size loop and it works perfectly well. You simply, you know, after you sew the loop, you just keep sewing, pulling, pulling, pulling the thread um, until it's longer than the, the loop you want to turn. And then you, you thread that through a needle and slide the needle blunt end first through the whole loop pull it out the other end and just keep pulling to turn it. Uh, it, also, like, it takes a little finicking to get, you know, the first little bit in, but if you're using it on the bias and your end is a point, it makes it easier. So keep that in mind. But this is another one that works really well and it requires no extra anything. All right, so these are the 10 tips that I tested. I hope it's been useful and let us know if you've tried any or if any of these ones that I've tried work better or worse for you than they did for me. As always follow us on YouTube, Instagram and Facebook and we'll see you on the next one.